I've had a lot of you guys asking about Ryzen 3, the new leaks, and a whole load of other stuff, so I thought that I would take the time to do this video about everything that we know about Ryzen 3 at the time of filming. Now, I do film these videos in advance, so if there's anything that has come out since I have filmed this, then I apologize. I'll add any extra sources in the comments down below, but let's jump into it. So all of the sources that I'm using for these videos are linked in the description down below if you want to check them out or see more details detail yourself, but let's jump into the, the spec list first. Now, they're saying that Ryzen is actually going to be getting a Ryzen 9 lineup as well, which I'm actually kind of disappointed in, in the same way that I'm kind of disappointed that they followed Intel's i3, i5, i7, and now i9 naming schemes with obviously Ryzen 3, 5, 7, and now Ryzen 9, so a little bit disappointed there, but I'm not too disappointed at the spec of the chips that they're offering. According to the leaks, which of course could be wrong, so do keep that in mind. AMD are potentially going to be offering up to 16 cores on the desktop platform with the 3850X. Now this is awesome to see. It was obviously have SMT enabled, so there'll be uh, 32 threads total, and uh, that's going to be very interesting. As, as it looks, all of the current gen chips, so for example a 2700X uh, or a 2600X, will all be getting a core increase, sort of bump up, so the uh, Ryzen 3 chips will be going from 4 cores to 6, the Ryzen 5 chips will be going from 6 cores to 8, and the Ryzen 7 chips will be going from 8 cores to 12. Thankfully though, they look to also be improving their clock speeds as well, which should give you better in-game performance, even if you go with the same sort of core counts. Now, in theory anyway, again, according to the leaks, the fastest chip that they're going to have available is actually the 16-core one, which will boost all the way to 5.1 gigahertz, which is amazing to see from an AMD chip. Although I am a little bit confused as to why it's the 16-core that boosts the most instead of the 12 or 8 cores, which I would expect would have a little bit more power headroom to be able to, to boost that high. Obviously, we see, for example, Threadripper doesn't generally boost or overclock to the same amounts that the standard Ryzen chips do, so it'll be interesting to see how that one works out. As I mentioned, if you want to check out TDPs or anything else that was on those tables or really anything else, I'll leave all of the sources down below for you to check out, but otherwise, let's jump into the launch date. Now, this one is actually a bit of contention. There's a couple of different sources that suggest slightly different things here. Um, the first source is actually a number of emails that popped up on Reddit from a company called Bizgram replying directly to customers saying that they expect it to be eight to 10 weeks from now. Uh, when I say from now, that was probably a couple of weeks ago from when you're watching this, so that works out to be the sort of uh, end of April, start of May, which does tend to line up with when we've seen the past generations of Ryzen launch. So that kind of makes sense. The other source is actually an AMD uh, slide that came out actually the morning of uh, me filming this, um, which uh, suggests sort of mid-year, so potentially more like June, July. Uh, but I'm more hopeful for the earlier release date because mid-year mid is quite a, a generic name that really could range from anywhere to May to August, really. And of course, we have to talk about pricing. We actually have two sources for this. One of them is the company I've already mentioned, Bizgram, and the other one is actually Jim from Adore TV, who's already done a video on this. So if you want to check that out, feel free to do so. With that said, there's a slight discrepancy in those pricing sources. Um, Jim's numbers are a little bit lower, whereas Bizgram's are a little bit higher, but that can actually uh, be mostly due to exchange rate differences. So uh, generally speaking, what it seems to be the case is that if you bought a 2700X, you would now be able to buy a 3700X for a very similar sort of price. Now, I should mention that all of the tables here actually have a conversion to UK pricing, and the pricing is at least seems to be anyway just a direct conversion of how much that number in dollars is in pounds at the moment. Although I would like to suggest my own pricing here in, in this table, which is essentially a slight markdown from the dollar pricing, but still not a straight up exchange rate copy. And the reason for this is that time and time again, we see every time you get a UK or a USA dollar price on a product, especially a tech product, you generally see a fairly similar number in pounds. 
if slightly less. Now I'm happy to be proved wrong with this, but this is my suggestion for what UK pricing will be like for the UK audience. And of course, for the US audience, which are very uh, uh, strong in numbers here, um, you've obviously got native pricing for you there too. And if you want to check out, you know, relative other pricing, then generally speaking, you're probably looking at a fairly similar number to either the UK or US pricing. So take that how you will. With that said though, it does look to be very interesting pricing and could be incredibly competitive in this current market. I'll be interested to see what Intel's response to this are in their next upcoming CPUs. Um, so we'll definitely have to uh, kind of wait and see for that. If you're excited by Ryzen 3rd Gen, then feel free to let me know in the comments down below which chip you'll be looking to pick up or you know any thoughts on the, the launch or the rumors or anything else. As I mentioned, I do film these videos in advance. So if any new leaks or rumors have come out since I've filmed this video, then do let me know in the comments down below and I'll add those to a pinned comment so that everyone can keep up to date. Of course, make sure you are subscribed for the reviews of the chips when they actually come out to see some actual performance numbers. And of course, feel free to uh, check out the other videos over there. You can also check out the links in the description if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday basis. There's Amazon Overclockers UK affiliate links where you can buy your new Ryzen 3 chips when they're available or a load of other stuff. And of course, you can check out the rest of the links from Patreon if you want to support me directly or private internet access, which is a great and cheap VPN or a humble bundle for cheap games to support charities too. You can also check out the rest of the links down there, merch, hoodies, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below and we'll see you all in the next video.